Fellas, I know we've made similar videos of this talking about how you need to grind Nightfall ordeals. This week though, I beg you, happening right now is double loot in the Nightfall ordeals. Not only is it double loot, but the Nightfall this week is Lake of Shadows. Do you know how many stars have to align to grant us this? Now you may be saying to yourself, no, Cross, I've done enough Nightfalls, man. I'm out. Which my reply to you is this. How would you like to get in just one run four ascended shards, two exotics, which by the way will be 60 stat roll or higher, and 10 enhancement prisms in one run, which will take you 15 minutes to do. So guys, let's break down this nightfall. Let's talk about it, what you're gonna use, what you need. I'll say there are many strategies to doing this nightfall. This one just works the best for us. By the way, you 100% wanna try to go for platinum every single time to get the most loot possible. So first up, let's just address the elephant in the room. Should you be doing the Grandmaster Nightfall Ordeal or the Master Nightfall Ordeal? We ran Master Nightfall today doing Platinum and it still took us somewhere around 13 to 14 minutes. Now the loot's not bad. You still get double loot from this as well. Netting me one Ascendant Shard, one Exotic, as well as a number of Legendary Drops. Again, Master's not that bad. And on top of that, if you're looking to just coast and not worry about getting one banged by literally every single thing, I would say that Master Nightfalls is completely okay to do. But if you're a little more hardcore and you're like, listen, I want to make the most out of my time and I have a pretty decent team over here. By the way, if you don't, feel free to check out our Discord and our LFG. But if you got a dedicated team to run with, I highly advise the Grandmaster version. It would take you somewhere between 14 to 15 minutes. And at most, even us waiting for a superhero at the end took us about 16 minutes. So you're talking about an extra three to maybe four minutes longer. But look at this loot dude this is insanity right here 10 enhancement prisms two exotics two ascendant shards bombad next to me got two exotics and four ascendant shards and like i mentioned a second ago all of these exotics have 60 plus stat rolls very good rolls i might add so now might be the time to start looking at all your exotic armor pieces and deciding which ones you want to keep and which ones you should get rid of so again if you want an easier more tamed experience but still good loot feel free to just do the master knife but if you want to do back to back 15 minute grandmaster runs just imagine after one hour you could be sitting on 16 ascendant shards which you can't even hold so you'll have to have your postmaster free 40 enhancement prisms and eight different exotics so just something to keep in mind that's just after one hour if you do these back to back which is very possible this is one of those nine falls like once you get it down even on the grandmaster version it becomes almost second nature which takes us to my suggestions for this nine fall first up this week no barrier champions secondly the most common shields are arc shields and solar shields both of which are equally annoying there is a wizard with a void shield but i really wouldn't worry about him too much if you've got a void grenade which i highly suggest rock and bottom tree night stalker or even void walker something there to have yourself oppressive grenades you can just utilize one of those grenades for dealing with that wizard but let me go ahead and mention some of the mods you hands down want to have on your armor pieces as this is going to make life a lot easier. And we've mentioned this before in the past when going over Nightfall Ordeal builds. This week, though, is a little more of a twist. First up, I'm rocking Top Tree Sunbreaker. You don't have to play Top Tree. You don't even have to play Titan. But I'm taking advantage of Hammer Strike, which is actually one of the best debuffs in the game in terms of duration, as well as debuff percentages. It's extremely nice. Now, combining with this, when I actually go in for the melting point, I have my Imperial Decree here, which sadly is getting sunset next season. This bad baby's got Trench Barrel. It's also an aggressive frame shotgun with a salt mag pulse monitor a very good shotgun you don't have to have this shotgun but if you're already running in there to get the melting point off and that hammer strike melee you might as well have a shotgun with trench barrel on now a couple of things are happening the moment i make contact with an unstoppable first up I've got Inferno Whip. This actually allows me to stagger Unstoppable Champions. Secondly, we have Counter Charge, which immediately gives us a charge of light whenever me or even a member of my fire team staggers or disrupts a champion. Counter Charge is hands down the mod you and your entire fire team need to be using. I'm also rocking stacks on stacks to allow me to gain an extra charge of light. But let's go over some of the other mods that I'm utilizing. And this is more particular to those that are playing this playstyle, but it does work. There is somewhat of a 
skill gap here. But if you know how to bait these unstoppables to you, most notably, if you allow your hunter to invis you, this is extremely good. Now, there's a lot of different ways you can go, but that's essentially the main two mods you want to have. You could take advantage of these charges, most notably with high energy fire for that increase there in damage. Another mod that I was also using is reactive pulse. While charged with light, taking damage when surrounded by combatants allows you to emit a burst of damaging arc energy, consuming one stack of charged with light. Now, that's nice. The main thing that I like, though, is gain a powerful overshield while performing your finisher. We're also combining this with solar plexus. So I think you guys see kind of what we're doing here. I'm just trying to give some suggestions here, getting the melee off of that increase in damage, dropping the hammer strike debuff, proceeding to take advantage of high energy fire and that increased damage with trench barrel on my shotgun. And as soon as I get the enemy down to low enough health, proceed to finish them off, gain an overshield during the process, thus keeping me alive for my fire team. Now, in terms of weapon choices, I was rocking a shotgun because I was running in there getting the hammer strike off, but Les and Bombad both were rocking mountain tops. They're actually rocking mountain tops with bows. One of the best bows to use here is point of the stack as it's an arc bow and it comes with vorpal weapon. Another good bow is also Hush. Hush is a solar bow, and even though it doesn't have any damage dealing perks, Archer's Gambit is fantastic for delivering those rapid shots. The heavy weapon of choice that we utilize, and I know a lot of people like using swords because Lake of Shadows, you've got that boss there that spawns and you can immediately sort them down. However, the majority of the strike doesn't involve the boss room, which is where we like to use Anarchy. Anarchy is still fantastic everywhere else, especially when combined with high energy fire, allows us here to safely stay away from our enemies, do peak damage, and only dip back out for the stunts. Really, really like Anarchy here, guys. Again, this boss is not a high health boss. He's really easy to gun down, which takes us to this room. What I actually like to do, and really the best thing to do if you are playing Titan with Hammer Strike, is go ahead and drop some Anarchy shots down, and then proceed to get your Hammer Strike off. Now, the moment you get this melee debuff on the enemy, I would highly suggest popping your hammer he immediately is going to either swing his shield at you or blast you one or the other aka you will die so it's highly advised just to go ahead and pop your hammer gain that damage resist and get back to your teammates. Now, Les was rocking a Well of Radiance, which in this situation is fantastic. It stacks with Hammer Strike, just like any buff does, but it allows us to safely stay back from the boss here. And as you can see, it's so easy to gun him down. If you are running into a situation where this is taking longer to gun him down, stagger your debuffs. As in, if you've got a person on your team rocking Oppressive Darkness, don't throw it at the same time the Hammer Strike goes off. They do not stack. So what we were doing is doing the Hammer Strike first, and then after a bit, we would throw an Oppressive Darkness grenade on him, to apply another debuff if we needed to. But nine times out of 10, we would just gun them down really fast. So guys, that is Lake of Shadows. There are a few problem areas, most notably the bridge, and then this little room right here. This room was hell. I highly advise that if you are the solar type, the sunbreaker type, or really any solar subclass that has an offensive super, pop it here. I always find myself trying to play conservative because I'm like, oh man, I may need my super for the boss room it's a good chance you're going to have your super back by the time you get to the boss room, especially if you're rocking Halifire Heart, which is what I'm rocking here. Pop your super here, kill these knights, or at least break their shields to let your teammates throw some anarchy shots or something up there and just stay away from the fire. That fire kills you so fast. Honestly, that's the only problem room. The bridge is kind of difficult, but the main thing you want to do is just take your time and that one at target, you want to let that target leave. Don't try to engage, let it leave. Trust me, you're going to save a lot more time just letting that one at target go so good luck this week guys it's double loot man it's nasty it's very much worth your time more so than ever before i've got a few exotics i'm still in the hunt for for god rolls and again as far as what god rolls you should want on your exotic figure out what it is you're trying to spec for like if you're trying to spec for like a discipline build or maybe you've got an exotic that really dips into your discipline obviously something like armatarium you want high discipline halifier heart you want high intellect that's the thing guys you don't want to overcomplicate things i'm very simple about what i want on my exotics By by simply seeing what does the exotic offer and what's the play style I want to merge with that exotic. Part of Inmost Light is a perfect example. I'm taking advantage of empowering. I need to be able to drop barricades as often as possible. So I really want to spec for high resilience to drop my barricade time down and high discipline. And again, even though some of these stat rolls are really, really good, it may not 
fit that exotic. But hands down, I would definitely keep your 60 plus stat rolls over anything in that 50 stat roll territory. Good luck this week, guys. Again, our Discord link is down below. If you're looking for an LFG team, feel free to drop by. We have LFGs for all platforms. By the way, if you are new to the channel, subscribe, man. Stick around. We cover everything. We literally talk about this game every day. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.